Hello, my name is Ken Atigari, here to present another video. In a, in a previous video, I showed you how to create dependent drop-down lists using the indirect and substitute function. Now I had something like this, where I had region, I had countries, and I had cities. Now what I did back then was to create a, a drop-down list for the regions using the data validation function. Lists, then I picked up the values here, as sources B3 to B7. Then I created a country list that would pick based on whatever is selected in the region list. I did that by going over to data validation, data validation, lists. I created a function, a formula here saying indirect substitutes that look at this value here, pick out whatever is there, substitute the name there in terms of, uh, rather substitute the characters, then creates basically the drop down. I explained what the substitute meant, why it was used when you're using the name manager. Now someone got back to me saying, right, great, I did this, it worked. But when I had um, a non-alphanumeric character, it stopped working. What do I mean? Imagine, uh, let's say, this person decides to put select, make select, uh, put an asterisk in select. Sorry. What he was saying is that this stopped working. Now let's see how true that is. Yep, you can see it has stopped working. It has stopped working. It's not able to read select. Why is this the case? Uh, let's see why. We go over to name manager. Fabulous name manager. Let's look for, do we have anyone? Look, let's look for select. Sorry, this is even going to be wrong. Let's call select this. Yep, this is the correct thing to do. Right. Okay, go back to name manager. Edit. The name here is within select. That should not be it. What it should have here is asterisk select. But when you try to save this, it will not save. This is because it won't accept asterisk character. It's going to accept only. Uh, an underscore or a letter or number as you can see here so what I could do is to replace this with an underscore and close in other words what the name manager would read when it sees this is an underscore. But then, this is not changed yet. That's because you need to edit the equation. And you do that by coming over here, indirect substitute. You need this to pick up, to change space values to underscore, and to, to also change um, asterisk values to underscore. You can do that by putting substitute function here first. Is that the correct spelling? Okay. Alright. Let's open this up a little bit more. 
So what you're going to say now is that, first of all, look into the substitute spaces with the underscore. Then the equation does that. But for those that don't have spaces, so it's got it substitutes spaces with an underscore. But then, if for example it's got an asterisk, we then go further by creating this equation. If it's an asterisk, yep. Okay, so what this does is that it substitutes functions, uh, rather characters in the text that are either space or asterisk. It turns them into underscores. We could go further by creating another substitute before the substitutes and put in a new value. For example, if you've got a comma in some of your text, you could do that. Um, the way to be double sure is you carry out a data profile where you look at all the characters in your data then based on that you build your tool so now you can see that this works so I'm going to also do this here Right. So, what have I done wrong now? Indirect substitute, substitute. This becomes this. This. Let's see. Oh. Very hard saying the same here. Substitute. Okay, this should be nothing more than one bracket. Sorry about that. Okay. Right. So now let's just take it a step further. Imagine you've got North America's got. Come there, and of course that means North America has got come there. So over here we've got a mix of both comma, asterisk, and a space. What we do, we go over to Name Manager, we edit the name not America. So now it's got a comma. Edit name. Let's cancel this. Let's do this again. I want you to automatically pick the fine name. Okay, what it has done here is that the comma, it has turned it to an underscore. So you actually have two underscores here, like you can see when I create a space between them. So this one is from F3. So this replaces the comma with an underscore. So this is more complicated. What I'll do here is to increase the number of substitute functions. I do that by going to data, data validation,
now it's in inputs comma then we keep it on step one uh, okay it's it, there's a mistake in one of my brackets as I can figure out which of them it is. Substitute, substitute, so, oops, this is where I had it wrong. Okay, let's stop it right now, and uh, that's a game. Substitute, substitute. Getting two buggers to work with here. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this and take it to, oops, 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 oops. oops. Quite tricky working in this little window. I'll copy this. Come over here. Create a formula here. Yes, yeah, so I can see it better here. Equal to. Like this has IntelliSense to help me create the right formula. So I can come back here, pick out the right formula. Copy. Go in here. Go to data validation. Then add this in. Oops. This is really you know, tricky. Okay, let's take it back again. Equal to this. Then, okay, so now this is more flexible. Let's see, okay, this changes. Mm -hmm. So let's see the value, not America. Right, so there it goes, it works. Great, excellent. It's a nice uh, showing you this video. Um, please do join me for the next video. Whenever we meet again, thank you and bye-bye.